internet as we know it is dead. On Tuesday, the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, the second most important court in the country after the Supreme Court, struck down the FCC's open internet order, the legal framework that was protecting net neutrality. This is nothing short of a disaster. The idea behind net neutrality is pretty simple. Big corporate internet service providers like Verizon should have to treat all websites and all web users equally and should not be allowed to treat the internet like their own personal toll road. They shouldn't be allowed, for example, to run a music website at crappy speeds just because that music site might compete with one that Verizon owns. Net neutrality is important because it keeps the internet open for everybody. If corporate internet providers like Verizon or Comcast are allowed to discriminate between websites, they can make the owners of competitor sites pay them top dollar to run their websites at the high speed. Again, without net neutrality, Verizon could treat the internet like its own privately owned toll road. People who wanted to drive on it would have to pay up beforehand. If those people didn't pay up, Verizon could slow down the speed of their websites. This would obviously be great for Verizon, but it could make it near impossible for rival websites to compete with Verizon-owned websites and put a damper on a lot of innovation, which is exactly why big internet corporate providers have been trying to gut net neutrality for years. And with Tuesday's DC Circuit Court ruling, they finally got their wish. Net neutrality in the US is dead for the moment, and big internet service providers are now free to discriminate against web users and websites as much as they want. The roots of Tuesday's decision go back almost 20 years ago to when Congress redefined the types of technology services that the FCC could regulate in the Telecommunications Act of 1996. In that act, Congress said that internet companies like Verizon were providing an information service as opposed to a common carrier service. If something's an information service, the company that provides that service is free to charge you more money for different levels of access. The best example is cable television, which is considered an information service and therefore not a common carrier. For example, your cable company could charge you 25 bucks for basic package, $25 more for premium news and sports channels, five bucks more for a big ticket movie channel. It's up to them what, you know, what they want to offer. It's up to you what channels you want to buy. But the basic point is that your cable company, as the information service, can treat its users differently depending on how they use their televisions depending on what they watch. Common carrier services are not allowed to do this. Phone companies, for example, are common carriers. As a common carrier service, your phone company can't just charge you for doing something like using your personal phone line to talk business with a friend. They can't listen in and say, oh, it's a business call. We're going to charge them extra. That's because a common carrier service, as a common carrier, your phone company is providing a public good. It's basically a utility. And utilities, like telephone service, water service, they're considered part of the commons because they're natural monopolies. A natural monopoly is when you really only have access to one thing. Just like you only have one water line or one power line running into your house, you typically only have one telephone line running into your house. This is true for most American users of the internet today, that they only have one internet line running into their house. Just like most Americans have only one water line or one telephone line running into their house, most Americans only have one internet line running into their house, and that's their cable line. As a society, we generally define natural monopoly, monopolies as common carriers because they're perceived to be part of the commons, because it's important for everyone to have open access to them without having to worry about being ripped off by a particular utility company. That's why the FCC should designate internet service providers like Verizon as common carrier services rather than information services. Something, by the way, they could do tomorrow if they chose to. The FCC should do this because by providing internet service, Verizon, Comcast, ATT, and other big internet service providers are giving their customers access to one of the most important parts of our modern information commons. If we want to make sure that everyone can use that part of the information commons, the internet, we need to regulate internet service providers as common carriers. When the internet was just starting out and people accessed it by dialing in through their phone lines, there were tens of thousands of companies across America offering dial-up access. Remember that sound? So back then, you could make an argument that those internet service providers were information services rather than common carriers because there was so much competition in the marketplace. 
But now that we're near, nearing a time when almost 75% of American households only have one choice for internet service, access to the, and one pipe coming into the house, access to the internet has become both a natural monopoly and in a very real way close to an oligopoly, a very small number of companies owning it. With the rise of cable bundling, the internet marketplace is now dominated by giants like Verizon, Comcast, and AT&T. And the result is that most people only have a very limited number of ways to get access to the internet. As such, access to the internet is a natural monopoly and therefore should be regulated by the FCC as a common carrier service. Unfortunately, the FCC and the U.S. Supreme Court, or at least the district court, superior court, don't see it that way. In 2002, under George W. Bush, the FCC classified broadband internet access companies uh, provided by companies like Verizon as an information service. This is something that Colin Powell's son did when he ran the FCC. He's now the chairman, by the way, of the uh, telecommunications lobbying industry. He got very rich because of this. In 2005, the Supreme Court upheld Michael Powell's decision to make that, and, and, the, and the FCC's power, when he was the head of it, to make that classification. And in 2010, when the FCC issued an open internet order to protect net neutrality, they neglected to define internet service providers like Verizon as common carriers, and that was a huge mistake. When the D.C. Circuit Court struck down net neutrality on Tuesday, it said that because the FCC defines companies like Verizon as information services, net, ne net neutrality, something that's mandated for common carriers, wasn't necessary. The stakes couldn't be higher. Modern, li modern life and our modern economy depend increasingly on the internet. Small businesses needed to grow. Everyday people needed to shop for goods or just learn about the world around them. All those things would be a lot harder to do if companies like Verizon can discriminate against startup websites or everyday internet users to pad their profits. We need to petition the FCC to change their rules so that internet service providers like Verizon are labeled as common carriers, not information services. That way, net neutrality will be preserved, and the internet will remain open to everyone, not just giant corporations. Go to freepress.net to sign the petition and tell the FCC how you feel.